Hey guys, welcome back to the Certain Man channel. I just recently come into acquisition of this pretty interesting M1 carbine here, and I thought I would make a quick video about it because it's rather unique, and you may say, Millsert Man, that doesn't necessarily look like a unique M1 carbine to me. Well, it kind of is, and I'll kind of get into the story because you don't really see a whole lot of information about these online, and the person I even purchased it off of didn't really know what it was, so... I've done a little bit of research, I've kind of known about these prior, and I thought I'd go ahead and take a deep dive. So, what you see looks just like a standard World War II USM-1 carbine. You do see this gnarly looking metal handguard here. You can see this kind of this off color on the receiver that jumps out at you right off, and our non-standard checkered butt plate, or no, I'm sorry, non-standard just flat butt plate, usually they're checkered. And if you can read the receiver, you can see that it says Alpine. Now, a lot of people haven't heard of the company named Alpine. Now, when I think of Alpine, I think of the G.I. Joe Alpine from G.I. Joe American Hero, but nonetheless, um, Alpine was actually a sub company of what a lot of people know as National Ordnance. Now, National Ordnance gets a lot of bad reputation for their cast receivers on their M1903A3 rifles and their M1 Garand or Garand rifles that they built there in the 1960s, and that's where this rifle comes alive. This is pretty much a reproduction of a USGI M1 carbine that was made during the 60s. If you guys don't know, the M1 carbine during that time frame from the 1960s and 70s is how the AR-15 is today. It was kind of the cool guy gun that everybody wanted. It was the, the tactical gun. Everybody wanted one. And a lot of commercial companies spun up to produce these M1 carbines. Uh, a few that come to mind is Plainfield, Universal, um, even Alpine, National Ordnance, and even Ivor Johnson or just a few of the commercial companies that told up to make these, and there's probably many more that I'm missing. And uh, I don't normally collect stuff like this. Um, this is just something I usually stay away from because, you know, if you're going to get a carbine, you're always better off getting a USGI uh, model with a milled steel receiver, and just the, it's got the history. But this one kind of presented itself to me, and it had a ton of accessories and ammunition, and if you don't know, 30 carbine ammo is extremely hard to find and expensive when you do. And the price was right, so I just went ahead and purchased it, and I've kind of learned a lot. And these guns, for what they are, if you can get them for a cheap enough price, there's really no need to snarl your nose at them. So what Alpine or National Ordnance did in the 60s is they pretty much took brand new receivers and built um, carbines off of those brand new receivers, all USGI parts. So this carbine has a lot of good USGI parts. You can see our PI um, stamped rear sight which would be inland it does have an inland trigger group with a winchester hammer and sear we can see our s and s stamped safety it does have a winchester op rod we can see we're missing our little detent there it does have an inland type 3 round bolt and it does have a post-war um mmq barrel band and we can see that a rifle is empty and it also has and Underwood, you can see a little U there, Underwood front sight. So pretty cool that it has this, all this nice GI parts on there. And it's just a really good uh, donor gun. If you need something that has, if you need a part on this that maybe one of your carbines need. Or it could be a good reenacting piece. Now, what um, Alpine slash National Ordnance done, they took existing 1903 A3 surplus barrels and they turned them down to um, fit an M1 thread into an M1 carbine receiver and you may think well how did they do that well they threaded them down and they took the the gas port section and they welded it on later we'll actually get this gun apart and we'll, t we'll check it out here in just a second but um, they turned down the barrels and they used surplus M1903 A3 barrels and they welded on the gas block section to uh, the barrel and then threaded in the receiver so I almost <laughs> I, we know, I know the barrel is not completely USGI, but it is off a World War II era firearm. So pretty much everything on here is World War II era except for the receiver. So I thought that was pretty cool. And even some of the stocks um, you can actually find are surplus. Now, I believe later on they run out of GI stocks and they started using some kind of other stock from another company. But you can see this wood looks, um, there is no marking in the sling wheel. It does have some markings up here towards the, the firearm here up here, but... Let's go ahead and break it down and I'll show you guys what's a little bit different about these and unique. Okay, so we went and took our M1 carbine down here so you can kind of take a look at what they done here. So like I said, they took an M1903A3 barrel and turned it down. And later in production, they put on these kind of gas block sections and welded them on in place. 
you can see there we got our standard USGI piston head and piston collar and we can get a look at that cast receiver now they did do castings you can also notice the Alpine M1 carbine that they located the receiver or serial number right here in front of the front sight base um, some of them have been located down here and right around here on different models but I'll get you a, a better look at that and we can also get a better look at our military surplus bayonet lug and our underwood marked front sight post we can see that we do have a a Winchester type 4 I believe slide an op rod that is missing the detent and catch so I do need to get a replacement and fix that we do have a type 3 inland round bolt which is very very cool and appears to be in really good shape our trigger housing is going to be inland marked with a Winchester hammer and I believe if I seen that sear right earlier is going Winchester sear I'm not sure on the trigger and we do have a SNS marked flip safety and a M marked magazine catch so pretty cool is full of surplus parts and that kind of got me excited just I'm not very interested in firearms like this usually but for the price I paid and it will make a great planker and a great one to take out of the range you want to worry about beating and banging around and um, it just makes a great reenactors piece and it's just to keep your to keep your good surplus M1 carbines in good condition you can use one of these and not have to worry about dinging it up I thought I'd make this quick video just kind of explain to you what these Alpines are. And if you see one, kind of what to look for, you can pretty much tell when they have USGI parts on. They're just a different color than the rest of the firearm. Like you can see the barrels, like a, you know, this gas uh, cylinder is kind of blued. And the receiver is this plum looking color. But yeah, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Just thought I'd make this quick video kind of explaining what these are. If you enjoy this kind of content on the Man channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Give me a follow and always leave a comment down in the comment section. I love interacting with my viewers and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. That's going to be all for today. Thank you. God bless.